Hello students, today we are going to see about a rare commodity or a precious resource that's about water. I hope you all are drinking enough water but not wasting it because it's a precious resource. We see many children just washing hands, just not washing hands but just throwing off water. But here is something what we need to learn so that we know how precious this water is. Okay, so how to care for this water and why is it getting depleted are all that we are going to see in this episode. Right, now let us take this. Do you see this water scarcity everywhere? Don't we see this? Yes, if you can see people just fighting for just buckets of water, just a pot full of water, they wait for hours and hours together. Whereas there are some places where you have ample amounts of water just being wasted. When you travel on the roads, you can see people opening the taps and throwing or no water is just pouring out, but they are not bothered to close it. Yet in some other different parts, the water is so scarce. There is a in Africa, there's a place where they even ration the water. Okay, each family is given only certain amount of water for the whole week. They have to use that. Can you imagine such a situation for you? It is very, very easy to avoid that. But it is in our hands. As environmentalists, it is in our hands. So that's what we are going to see. Why is this scarcity coming up? That's first reason is because of population. That everybody knows that as the population increases, the demand for water keeps on increasing and there is scarcity of water. The second one is when the population increases, the industries also increase. That's also one reason why it is depleting so fast. Industries need a lot and lot of water and that is how it gets depleted. Okay, now going to the third one. When there are industries, where there are industries, definitely there is pollution. Due to pollution, what happens is the amount of water that is usable, portable and all that is completely getting reduced. Okay, so the water may be available in plenty, but whatever is allowed to be used, whatever is permissible to be used is very less because contamination is so high. In some places, you have mercury contamination, you have lead contamination, you have arsenic. These are heavy metals that can have a toll on our health. And that is why this pollution is also one of the reasons for scarcity of water. And then the changing climatic conditions. Yes, why do we have these changing climatic conditions? That's because we cut down trees, right? So there is deforestation. When trees are cut down, the temperature increases and then the rainfall becomes less. And when rainfall is less, naturally it becomes arid, it becomes very dry. Humidity is less and water content is less. Okay, so these are some of the reasons why we have scarcity. Come on, now let's go to, so what we have to do is, now we must be, we must gear up, we must start acting very fast because the days are not very far away. It is very near, so we have to do something about it to conserve and preserve this water. So what's a watershed? A watershed is basically something where you have a slopey area like this, okay, and in these slopey areas, it's like a mountainous range and there is a slope and whenever you go through these mountains, uh, if it is a rainy season, you would suddenly see that some rain, uh, waterfall is there. How does this waterfall come? Out of the rain comes streams and rivulets, small rivers that come through that. So these are those streams that join together. Now here what happens, it comes down and it is collected here. This is what this area is called a watershed. And this watershed has a lot of advantages. See, all these areas where there is no greenery at all, no trees at all, once this water starts collecting, even in our own areas, we can see, you know, after the rain, you can see such green grass. It looks like it's smiling at us. 
But before that, when it's summer, everything dries off and the cattle keep searching for grass and it is not there. Same thing happens here. What happens? All this water gets collected in a watershed and because of this, it conserves the soil because a lot of green trees and shrubs, they conserve the soil. They make the soil, they hold back the soil and they can also conserve water, recharges the groundwater and there is also green belt that develops. So that's what is the importance of watershed. Now we move on to indigenous methods by which we can save or conserve this water. Now we move on to some indigenous methods. Indigenous means what? Traditional. Okay, from for years together they have been following this. That is called as indigenous methods. How do we harvest the rain? See, whatever rain is there, see in different places where we live, we see that the rains are quite heavy in some places. But are we storing all that water? We aren't doing it, right? We are not saving that water. So here are some methods which they have been following for years together. Look at these places. This is actually in Rajasthan where there was severe water scarcity. Okay, see these ladies, they used to carry and how much can they carry? Maximum of two to three pots. Even that would be really, really strenuous for on them. Okay, but they used to carry for a long distance. They used to wait, travel for 15 to 20 kilometers for just these two pots of water. Can you imagine how we waste this water? And here is water that is not there at all. And that is when came a man called Rajendra Singh. Actually, he and his friends, there were four of them, and this is going to really encourage you, okay? These four of them, they decided that they should do something good for the society, and they planned. But when the plan came up, three of them backed out, and it was only this person, Mr. Rajendra Singh, okay? He started, he had this idea of Johads. He introduced Johads in Rajasthan. Rajasthan was known to be arid and semi-arid in most of the districts, especially Alwar, Bikaner and all were very dry. But he introduced this Johads. Johads is something like this. See, this is the exact picture of a Johad where you have a semi-circular bund that is built by man and the other side of this, you have the water collection point. Okay, so water just flows through the other side and it is prevented from going away or getting wasted and it is stored in this place. And this is wonderful because there's a lot of significance with Johads. The first thing is there were many rivers that were flowing through Rajasthan and most of the time it was dry and they were seasonal rivers. What do you mean by seasonal? So when it rains, there will be water in these rivers and when after the rains, it's completely dried up. But now, after these Johads were introduced in many villages, so many villages, thousands of Johads have come up right now. After that, these seasonal rivers have become perennial rivers. What do you mean by perennial rivers which have water throughout the year? Just imagine having water for two months and having water for 12 months, is, it makes a lot of difference. And that difference was made by just one person and that's why he's called the water man of India. Actually, he has got a lot of awards for this sake, for this work that he has done and he's extremely um, good and his, his idea has been really, really appreciated throughout the world. Okay, so seasonal rivers became perennial rivers. Now, do you think these ladies have to go such long ways, long distances? No, they will not. Okay, so the life of women changed. Okay, when water is there, when you have a lot of water, you feel like planting something, isn't it? Yeah, so trees came up. So this resulted in green belt. If trees, fruit and vegetable and agriculture increased because of water, they could convert this barren land, deserted land, arid land into agricultural land. Okay, so agriculture increased. When agriculture increased, green belt increased, automatically livestock increases. So livestock increased. 
see what all water can do and this water was this idea behind that was from one person can you imagine even you people can do a lot of difference you can make a lot of difference when you start stepping in to do something good yes now here livestock increased if livestock increased agriculture increased the economy of the people also increased automatically okay and not only that see there is uh, uh, something called ground water okay so the ground water level also increased so these are the significance of johads so johads are just they look like they look very simple because sometimes you no know, it is made of uh, sandbags sometimes it is just clay soil just the soil that is locally found but in spite of all that they play a very important role because all these advantages are there with johads and not only in rajasthan when this was started in rajasthan simultaneously there were other things that were coming up they were there in other places of india too there was something called kunz in gujarat and there was something called temple ponds or aries in tamil nadu which we are going to see this is a picture of aries or ponds they are called as temple ponds okay because basically they were placed in temples and there was a collection point see there is a center central place where there, they used to have a te small temple there and also surrounded by this is this pond which was filled with water from collection sites okay they were just drained into this place where they would be stagnant there for a long time and this water was considered to be sacred and also not only that there was a lot of use because of the significance is that wherever there is a collection of water wherever there is a reservoir of water the ground level the water table also improves a lot okay so what happened there was conservation of water and recharging of ground water that's the most important thing that happened with these aries or ponds now this is kunz this is found in gujarat okay here what happens is they have a circular system kind of and it just flows down it slopes down so the water just flows into it and there is some a lid which is something like a saucer that is inverted okay so inverted saucer is there and you can see a small hole over there so from there that is the point from where they draw the water it's like a well where water has been collected and it is preserved and stored and there's also a mesh so that an, uh, any dust or dirt does not enter in and this again has the same significance it is good for water conservation and recharging the ground water and not only that you get water throughout the year okay so these are the ways indigenous ways in which water can be preserved or stored and you can if you like it you can share it and you can subscribe and upcoming again the next video you can watch stay tuned to watch don't miss about rain water harvesting and wetlands and ramsar convention